Okay, my name is uh, Ton Beckers. In the program, you see uh, James Coomer. Uh, that's not me. Uh, he uh, got stuck on the airport yesterday night, so he couldn't make it. So I have to take over. Um, but luckily, uh, we, uh, as the program showed, we are going to talk, to show uh, customer experiences, uh, first customer experience on IME, and we have uh, two customers uh, who will do the majority of the uh, of the presentation. So burst buffer. Um, for those who haven't heard of burst buffer. That's a technology, I think, the first time it has been introduced by uh, some Department of Energy labs who wanted uh, to get rid of the problem that if you want to increase I.O. performance by a factor of X, you have to increase the number of drives by a factor of X. Um, if you look to the peak uh, performing file systems nowadays, they have somewhere in the range between 10 and 20,000 drives. So for the Exaflop initiatives, uh, people are talking about a file system which needs to be about 10 times faster. That would mean about 100,000 drives. That costs a lot of money, not only as far as the drives is concerned, but also as far as the power and space is concerned. So burst buffer is an initiative where you decouple uh, capacity from performance. And one of the implementations uh, <clears throat> is uh, DDN's implementation, and we call this IME, Infinite Memory Engine. Uh, what we do is we place a buffer in between the compute cluster and uh, the parallel file system. So you have to, you can think of this as a very fast hardware slash software uh, piece. Um, what this gives us is that this layer allows us to do various things. Um, it allows us to pre-stage application data in case of, uh, uh, of reading. Uh, it allows us to write very fast uh, from the compute cluster into this fast buffer, but it allows us also to store intermediate uh, application data and maybe not have to go back to the parallel file system to reload uh, uh, the data. And it's uh, still a usual mount point like a file system. Uh, so you have the possibility from the compute cluster to either use the burst buffer or not use uh, the burst buffer. <clears throat> so this shows in a bit more detail uh, how it works. You have a, a very large uh, cluster and think of it because this is easy to explain. Uh, you do a checkpoint uh, and the checkpoint all the nodes want to write at the same time uh, some data to the storage. Here you write it <clears throat> uh, to a fast engine uh, which uh, receives the data without any locking. So this is ex uh, makes it ex uh, extremely, sorry. So this makes it extremely fast. And of course, uh, you have to make sure that your data is uh, protected about the various IME hardware instances uh, you have in your uh, configurations. And the data are dynamically uh, mapped to uh, the hardware which is available. <clears throat> um, the, what you do then, so basically uh, you make, you write key value pairs to any piece of hardware that is available. What you do then, if you uh, uh, write it at the end to the file system, you sort this, these key value pairs in such a way that to the storage, to the persistent storage, you write only sequential data. And that has the advantage that you get rid of seeks, so you can uh, maximize the performance to your storage. But also, if you have to read the data afterwards, 
you also maximize your reads because you are just reading sequential ridges much faster than doing it randomly. <clears throat> so in, uh, in summary, uh, very brief summary, uh, it's designed for uh, extreme uh, scalability. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it scales out. Uh, uh, while uh, protecting data through the di distributed uh, erasure coding. And it's basically file system agnostic. It's a layer in between uh, the cluster and, uh, and the file system. So you have to think about on your cluster, you run an IME client. And on this fast uh, storage, uh, on this fast s server, which you can think of servers with uh, SSDs or some other non-volatile uh, memory um, <clears throat> writes very fast uh, uh, to it. And um, uh, then from there, it's written in a traditional way uh, to whatever the file system is. We have uh, various interfaces, a POSIX interface, an MPI, I.O. interface and an API interface, and customers are going to talk about it, what they have uh, tested so far. It's a non-deterministic system because it writes to ever, whatever resource uh, uh, is available, and it allows to write very fast, but not only write very fast, but also read very fast. Um, we have a couple of POCs in uh, worldwide. Uh, two of, or we have four in Europe. Uh, two of the customers are uh, are here. One of them is uh, iCheck. Uh, Marco Grossi is going to um, uh, talk about his exper first experience with uh, in using uh, this uh, hardware software. And at the end, uh, Hussein from CSCS is also going to talk about his experiences so far. Marco. Thank you, very pleased to be here. So to showcase some results of the applying IME to real world application, not only benchmark. So who am I? I'm Marco Grossi. I'm an HPC system administrator in iCheck. iCheck is the Irish Center for High-End Computing. So is the national provider for the HPC facilities, mainly targeted for academia at the start in 2005. So 2015, this is our 10th anniversary. And um, we know very well that Ireland uh, can't compete fairly on the HPC infrastructure point of view and an international point of view. So our focus is not on uh, big uh, HPC infrastructure, but on people, the skills of people and expertise. So we are in 27, we are a uh, mix uh, of computational scientists, system administrator, and developer, and we have no barrier interaction, so we have a quite fast interact, and we can adapt uh, quite easily to solve issue and uh, to perform very well. So, if you do like uh, uh, East Coast or West Coast of Ireland, we have our office on both sides, and we also host our supercomputing center in uh, Waterford, so we can cover what place of the island. So what do we do? Uh, we quickly describe what we have, um, uh, what we have done uh, chronologically in the last uh, few times. So we are part of the Intel Parallel Computing Center. So we are exploiting Xeon and Xeon Phi for some application that are DR Poly and uh, <clears throat> Harmony for weather forecast and we are exploiting also R, so statistics. For, in terms of big data, we are cooperating with the Central Statistics Office of Ireland uh, on behalf of uh, UNICE, that is the United Nation uh, with focus on Europe for, to exploit uh, so statistics uh, and big data. And we have uh, industry engagement, so our core fund is one third coming from industry. So moving forward, to the presentation, we will tackle um, an oil and gas test case. Uh, 
So here you can see we have an application that is the name of Tortilla, that the first two letters stand for Tulo Oil, and the reverse called Time uh, Imaging Application. So it's an RTM application. It's quite common in oil and gas industry. Uh, it was first developed by Tulo Oil, that is an Irish-based company, and uh, then uh, ask our app as I check to improve uh, have it uh, production ready and quality so has been uh, upgraded and uh, tuned for the uh, for the real world application so it's not a benchmark so it's calculating useful stuff and what kind of algorithm is so is reverse time migration so uh, usually in the oil and gas world, you have a, uh, you take a survey, marine survey with a ship. So you have a, um, you propagate a wave and you collect back the result of the propagation on the sea. And you want to reconstruct what are your interesting areas to where you will drill in for gas exploitation. So back to the application, it's heavily optimized and tuned already. So even before testing on a new system, so it's not necessarily you will have a huge speed up if your application is already well tuned. So some more details, what it is. So it's an application written in C++. It exploits both internode and internal parallelism, so OpenMP and MPI. So quite simple, standable. The input output data of our test case will be quite a small, so think about even 100 megabytes, so very small, but it generates a lot of data in the scratch area. So you should think that you collect uh, the output of your survey and you need to rebuild how the wave will be propagated both forward and backward in the sea. So you need to simulate at the first half of the loop one of the wave and the other one that you want to repeat, you need to have in memory the comparison. So one is forward, the other backward. So you need a scratch area to save at least one of the wave field to relate, to correlate the results. So in terms of storage, we need a scratch that is accessed in a lethal way. So last in, first out. How big is the scratch? It depends on the resolution of your analysis of the problem. So it's tunable. I will show you a quick picture of what can be used. So in terms of uh, I know how the application can do it. So to populate the scratch, we can use POSIX interface, standard POSIX interface, or one tuned for HPC, so MPIO, or otherwise stay only memory, so no IO at all. So we see a comparison if memory is faster or not, where it's supposed to be, yes. So how far we can be with a burst buffer in the middle. So to quickly describe again, one of the wave field will be written during the first half of the simulation, and then we read it back. Uh, so from instance 0 to k minus 1 that are temporary instances, we write as an action for every single time step, then we need to read it back. So in terms of caching, what we're supposed to find in cache is, of course, the last part that we wrote. So this instance, but unlikely you will have the one written before. So you will need to get the data back from the drive. So you go as fast as are your drive. So we did have access to um, compute system in the DDN Dusseldorf lab. That is an install, multiple instances, sorry, of DDN IME. So what we have a standard compute node because uh, DDN IME is supposed to be hardware and network agnostic, so it can run in whatever setup. So we have eight compute nodes that are two, 10 cores, and the main focus is in the amount of memory. 128 gigabytes of RAM is a bit unusual for a compute node. Usually you find 32 or 64. So you need to keep in mind that here you might gain caching effect on the node because we have a lot of memory that we do not use for computation. We have an underneath file system, so in this case it's Luster, and backed by an SFA 7000, so you have six OST, and the maximum portfolio you can get out of it is nearly 3.4 and 2.3 gigabytes per second, okay? Then, to 
As network, um, Western network infinite topology with an infinite bit of DR switch in the middle. And for instance, our oh, miss server. So how does it work? These server are standard 2U, rackable server, backed by each 24 SSD drive, 2.5 inch. Again, uh, hardware agnostic, so you can plug it in your storage box. And uh, we communicate also to the luster. So compute node can bottom on the luster and access to the IME server. And the IME server can interact with both compute node and the flash and read back from the luster storage. So luster in this case is just a choice. You can use the GPFS or whatever positive compliant file system you have. So this is a picture of me and uh, Gilles Sivario. Gilles is the one with the hair. And uh, we were here in Dusseldorf lab for the first time to try tortilla against the DNIME. So what would be our job? So Gilles is the main developer and domain expert. I am instead in charge of uh, the system side of you. So from the application point of view, we will use MPIO against the DNIME. You might also use the POSIX interface. We were already tuned for MPIO, so which is this one. We were, there were some constraints, of course, because the product is not on general availability. So in this test case, we did have to use Ember Pitch 2 instead of Intel MPI, that the one we are used to. But we still kept the Intel compiler to compile against the IME libraries. And the main difference is that we had to prepend I mean, colon to the name of the file that we wish to access through the burst buffer. This was the major change. That can be tricky for some application, I understand, but hopefully this will, uh, this will not be reflected in production. So we will be more much easier. So we identified three test cases. So, you have a total IO size that you will focus on the fact that we're using a scratch space. So half is written and half is read back. So for the 80 gigabyte test case, you have 40 plus 40 gigabytes. That is a quick data validation scenario. So the domain expert want to just have a quick brief on the, on the field to main focus later on with other analysis. So we have nearly a one terabyte total IO for a production size run. And then for high resolution run, so you increase the time step, you might have even 8.4 terabyte. Okay, we identify a small, medium and large test case. And we compare against the target that we can use in Tortilla. So one is in memory, so we do not use the storage at all. But of course, we need a compute node with enough memory. Otherwise, we go out of memory. We, we will use Luster and DDNMME with the MPIO interface, both of them. OK? So here we have uh, some results. So you have. Uh, the speed up relative to the luster test case. Of course, you need to see uh, in a critical way. So luster was uh, tuned to go up to 3.3 gigabyte per second, and uh, the bus buffer might reach another magnitude higher in terms of bandwidth. So we use only six nodes out of eight because we fit best the program for us. And so you find the two MPI rank per node and 20 OpenMP rank, uh, thread per rank. That means we are using hyper-threading because the library can use also hyper-threading to do the IO on dedicated thread. And so the target, you can see that Luster in this case is always slower than the in-memory case. In this case, you can see that in the small case, even if we have enough caching on the node, because we use up to 40 gigabytes of memory on each node, and the node have 128 gigabytes of memory each, so we can stay everything in the cache memory, you see that is exactly half of the time in memory. If you plug it in the burst buffer, so MPIU interface the same as the luster, you see that you do not go as fast as in memory. Okay, this is expected because you still use the network to reach the burst buffer. But you see that is quite 
nice awareness case if you increase also the test case size. So until the menu case, the one terabyte, you can still stay in memory on the node. And we are one third nearly of respect to Luster and not so far away with the worst buffer. But you gain a case where it is not possible to stay in memory for the latest test case. So here you reach up to three times speed up. This is not a your time. This is a total execution time of the application. It's not 10 times faster as the specs should say because it's not a storage benchmark. benchmark. So we need to compute something useful in the middle. And um, this is another um, plot about, so, okay, we stay we in one node, we run a simulation of the small case, and we do also in parallel increasing the number of nodes. We want to see how is stable the throughput and latency in access to the bus buffer, increasing the number of nodes or different workload to the bus buffer. Okay, so we reach a breaking point with Luster uh, between uh, five and six nodes and is quite stable up to eight. That was the number of nodes that were available. So we couldn't test with more than this. And okay, you can see that for the small test case, you have some reference time. So this one won nearly five minutes for the last test case. You have 220 seconds for the IME. And uh, this one instead is more focused on the IO. So the application uh, Trutia in this case, uh, the timing for MPR or read and write uh, is uh, nearly one, um, one fifth for the read in terms of throughput and nearly one eighth of the write. So if we do scale, we do compare fairly on the time spent in IO, you can see that you have a huge speed up that is nearly uh, the order of magnitude expected from, from the spec from the hardware. If you have any question, I can answer now or later in coffee break. Otherwise, we can move forward with our test case.